Welcome back to the Mount Man Medical YouTube channel. Thanks for hanging out today. Again, I'm with Dennis Lyons. He is with uh, TAC Med Solutions. He is one of the subject matter experts out there. He was a special operations combat medic in the army. And today he's been taking us through a lot of the products that they produce over there. And we sell all of these products on our website at mountmanmedical.com. So if there's something that you would like to procure for yourself in your own kit, then head over to Mount Man Medical. You can pick yourself up some of that. Um, but right now we're gonna be talking about the Rise Splint. So what, what can you tell me about the Rise? Yeah, so this is a great product. Really excited about this one. So Rise stands for Rid Rigid Immobilization System for Extremities. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what it is, is, uh, is it's a splint. Uh, not too far off from the splints you see out on the market now. Uh, they're usually made from some sort of aluminum with a slight padding to cover. This one kind of differs in a few in a few ways, and it's designed for the military, and it's and it's geared towards that market. But it has so many other applications outside. Um, so yeah, let's let's dive into it and check it out. Designed to fit in kind of a four by six platform, so it will fit into an IFAC. And it, although it looks thick right now, it's just the way that it's folded. So you can get this thing folded down nice and tight. And like I said, designed to fit inside of an IFAC. Now, we know that it's not like a tourniquet. This isn't something. Splinting is way down in the algorithm. But we know that splinting will do two things. It aids in hemostasis, and it reduces, it, it immobilizes, so it reduces pain, mm. right? Fractures are very painful, um, so we want to we want to, um, we want to immobilize. We know immobilizing helps with hemostasis as well. It's common sense. Not moving around, you're not displacing clots, keeping dressings in place. Um, it makes sense. So when you fold this thing down, four by six to about a quarter of an inch. So this thing works really well out of out of uh, confined space applications. So you just vacuum sealed that? Yeah, this is one that I kind of carry on my own. Um, I, I and it's in kind of my kits. It'll still fit inside of, of an IFAC, not vacuum sealed. I just like this. It goes into a real small form factor. Granted, it's another wrapping, but like I said, splinting's kind of far down in that algorithm, um, but it does have an application. So when I get around to splinting something, I'm going to have time to take it out of a wrapper, pull it out of, of wherever it's stored. So don't get too wrapped around the axle like we do with our tourniquets. Mm -hmm. So so you can go from a size like this mm -hmm. to a thickness of that. So that's yeah. I, love, I love that. If yeah. you have a vacuum sealer, that might be a good option for you. Yeah. So and there may be an option that we can even produce them that way. But the um, but the rise, as you'll notice, the rise comes with the same two great rubber bands uh, that are wrapped around our tourniquet. Um, and when you unfold the rise. What you get is uh, an accordion or Z-folded sort of platform. And the Rise is designed uh, with these living hinges, which there's scores in the material. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a high-density polyethylene. Um, so you can clean it, disinf uh, disinfect it, uh, and, and reuse the splint. Uh, it's really good for that. As opposed to some of the other ones, once you fold them up, you may never get them flat back again, depending on how, how you did it. This one kind of bounces back uh, pretty nicely. But it's got those living hinges. And if you're familiar with any of the drag sleds that are out on the market, yeah. right, they get their rigidity from when you fold them and you and you get a, a curve to them. And the rise is no different. So once you get that fold and you can fold along those living hinges, that's where you get the rigidity in this. And and so it's designed to be small, feel expedient, um, but, and, and there are better splinting solutions for long-term splinting, but you're not going to get them in the form factor of this out of an IFAC, right? So the right tool for the right job in the right place. Um, so, yep, you can get this and you can put multiple rise splints together, although this one will do anything you need to do on the lower leg or the arm. Um, so if you want to splint something out straight, just get it bed up nice, wrap it around, you're still going to pad the voids, right? Now, what one of the reasons one of the reasons this can get, can get small is because we took the padding out, right? Um, the padding that's on most of those commercially available splints is not enough padding to prevent pressure injuries, anyways. So we took that out and let you pad at your at, at your convenience with what you want or what you need. For a short-term splint, you may not have to pad. But um, so the nice thing about the rise is the instructions for use are printed right on the device. So there's not another 
piece of uh, material to, to throw in the trash or anything like that. Well, real quick, let me just specify, if you don't understand what he's talking about, he's talking about padding the splint, which is important, so that you're not getting some uh, pressure spots that are developing over a long period of time. Yeah. So if you're just gonna be applying this for the next half hour or so when you're getting down out of the mountains, then that's probably not a huge deal. But if it, you're gonna be there for long periods of time, you have to be conscientious of those, uh, those pressure points and pressure sores developing and being uncomfortable. We wanna to try to make our casualty as comfortable as possible. So padding it with you know, an extra layer of, of uh, like a jacket or a coat or another shirt that you have in your bag will help uh, the casualty out. Yep, and so one of, the other, one of the other cool things about the Rise Splint is the ability to fold it into a 90 degree, uh, 90 degree bend. And how we do that is through these snaps, uh, the snaps and holes that are located here. And as we just follow the instructions, we fold the splint in half. And what I always tell folks is, is these snaps, these snaps are the same snaps that come off like uh, the, the old combat helmets back in the day, oh, yeah. right? So they're a little tough the first time. Um, so I always tell folks, yeah, pull this thing out and get familiar with it, which is a good thing to do with any medical equipment you have. You know, this, like our tourniquet is very durable. Uh, and you're probably not going to break it. But what you do is you fold these snaps over and you get them snapped in. And once you get these snaps done, now I can fold this back. And now I have a 90 degree application. So I can do an arm, a leg, and then because the other living hinges across, I can fold this down um, and I can fold it down in either direction. So I can fold this down and now I have, I can do a foot um, or I can do an upper arm. Um, I can do an upper arm splint. And the other, one of the other, some of the other splints that it takes a lot to secure them, you can actually retain some weight on this. Those snaps are not gonna let go and you can actually retain some weight on it. So another great capability of the rise splint. So that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good application, otherwise, Splinting is pretty, it can be an art form, but it's fairly straightforward. So from here, I can wrap this up with one of my TACMED control wraps, which is basically uh, the ACE wrap off an Elias dressing without the, the padding. Mm -hmm. I could actually use an Elias dressing to secure it or any wrap, any sort of wrap, cravats, ties. You're, you're pretty much, whatever you have, you can secure this splint on. Uh, my preference is an ACE wrap or a control wrap or an Elias dressing. So um, really good, really good piece of kit for that. Um, like I said, we talked about uh, pain control, uh, a lot of studies out there that you control pain, you reduce, you know, post-traumatic stress, things like that. So yeah, we want to control pain. And we also, um, like I said, I talked about the hemostatic, uh, hemostatic benefits from immobilization. So you combine this with a, with a, with a, um, soft tourniquet and Elias Hemcon, you've got all your bases for extremity trauma. Mm -hmm. So all of my extremity trauma, uh, penetrating trauma, um, I can put a tourniquet on first, I can do my pressure dressing, pack my wound, wrap once, and then with my leftover off my Elias, I can wrap this whole thing up, or I can just get another control wrap or Elias bandage or whatever I need to wrap this up. So then I've got my tourniquet on, I've got my pressure dressing in place, and I've got my my uh, I've got it immobilized. So a, another great feature of the rise is uh, these slots that are cut in here. Um, this to me is is this was a real um, this was a real uh, this was for the military uh, these slots. So a lot of studies out there that show a high incidence of uh, pressure I, pressure plate IEDs and and blunt trauma uh, requires uh, pelvic stabilization. Mm -hmm. um, the other devices that do pelvic stabilization are, they're big, they're bulky, um, and they're very expensive. Um, they're very effective as, as well though. Um, what we look to do is, because that was happening so much, we needed pelvic stabilization in more places than just one in a medic's aid bag. Uh, we needed to reduce the cost and so what you can do is through these uh, slots, you can put any commercially based windlass or ratchet tourniquet through these slots, position them around the proper landmarks, which are the, the greater trochanters. And you can put the tourniquet on and, uh, and apply 
pressure till the patient gets comfort and you have a, a, an in extremis field expedient splint. Now, not meant for long-term use. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something long-term, I still suggest getting a commercially available pelvic binder, pelvic stabilizer. But if you have multiple casualties, if you have, um, or if you just don't know what casualties are most injured, you can use a rise splint on anyone and then figure out who gets the big, bulky, expensive item that really needs it. Right. So um, this is a great capability. It's out. It's pelvic stabilization out of an IFAC platform or a or a small low vis platform, which is is kind of it's kind of new and uh, and well needed. So um, not just penetrating trauma or blast, but any blunt trauma, um, um, any blunt trauma, vehicle accidents, industrial accidents, farm accidents. There's a lot of places. Um, ATV rollovers, there's a lot of places for pelvic stabilization in that. And hopefully we'll get to demonstrate that um, in another video. Yeah, so. I know uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the people that uh, come and see the YouTube channel, you know, they're hunters or outdoorsmen and that kind of thing. And we get people that will fall out of uh, out tree of stands. Tree stand. yep. That's like one of the big things. You fall out of the tree stand, land on your hip and you break your pelvis. Like, I, that's a pretty uncomfortable situation from what I understand. Yeah. And that will provide a decent amount of comfort relief and pain relief. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, you know, like I said, combined with any uh, windless based tourniquet. And I've even tried it out with just tying your cravat and, and got good results from that. So, yeah, pretty neat design. Um, and, it, and the nice thing is the, the high density polyethylene slides nicely under the void in the lower back. Mm -hmm goes under clothes, it, it, it really is an easy application. Like I said, we'll get to see that in a video, I'm sure. Okay. But uh, yeah, so that's the rise splint. You can clean it, um, disinfect it, um, doesn't need to be sterile. Um, so it's, it's a great device. You can, although it's labeled for one-time use, uh, you'll get many uses out of it. Um, I often, the questions I get asked are, you know, the materials, tensile strength, and the breaking strength here. Uh, this is high, de high density polyethylene. Um, the, the, um, the plastic here at the ends when you're doing pelvic stabilization will start to stretch at about 80 pounds, which is way over what you need to provide pelvic stabilization. So um, we can show in the video kind of where the stop point is for that. Um, but yeah, great, great device. Um, does well in the heat, the cold, um, everywhere. So and it's incredibly uh, cost effective as well. Um, for, what you, for what you find, it's competitive with all the other splints on the market, but then you add in the size weight cube and the pelvic stabilization capability, you got a lot of bang for the buck. Yeah, just the packability is like one of the big things because those uh, aluminum splints, they tend to be a little more bulky and take up quite a, quite a bit of extra room. Yeah, and they, you know, they have folded ones and flat ones, and they're still great products. Um, but like I said, all we did was took the padding off of that, uh, saved you the space and weight, and let you pad with what you want, when you want, where you want, mm -hmm. so. Love it. Yeah. All right, anything else? No, I think, that's, uh, I think that's about it. Awesome, well thanks for hanging out and checking out this video here, guys, on the Rise Splint. Like I already said in the beginning of the video, if you want any of these things, feel free to head over to the mountainmanmedical.com website where we sell all of these items. And while you're there, check out our Yellowstone and Wind River Trauma Kits. I'll catch you guys in the next one.